A court in the US has decided that civil lawsuits brought against Libyan warlord Khalifa Haftar may be heard out in federal courts. Haftar, who is a US citizen, is accused of war crimes and extrajudicial killings during Libya's civil war. Paddy Calhane is live for us in Washington, D.C. Hello there, Paddy. What does this long-awaited decision mean? Break it all down for us. All right, you're right. It has been a long-awaited decision. This is a civil case brought by defendants here in Virginia. Uh, Khalifa Haftar does have American citizenship, so they wanted to hold him civilly liable for what they call war crimes. Now, he uh, didn't really put on a defense. He wasn't deposed. Uh, but still, a judge this morning said that he is, in fact, liable, civilly liable, for, as you mentioned, war crimes, torture, extradition, killing. So what does that mean? It means the people that sued can now go after his assets. He has, according to one investigation by the Wall Street Journal, about $8 million worth of properties here in Virginia. Now, many of those are in limited liability companies. Many of those have been transferred to his sons. The lawyers speaking here said they believe they can get at those assets and even more. They believe he has tens of billions of dollars placed all across the world. So now the forensic analysis begins. The next phase is to try and figure out how much money he has and how much money these defendants will be awarded. So some of the evidence brought before the judge was a hospital that was bombed by his forces, killing a doctor, a family that was killed by an explosion in their home, a family that was tortured in their home. Uh, now, again, this is civil, this isn't criminal, but now it opens the door that these people can probably possibly get cash. I asked the, the defendants, uh, excuse me, I asked those who were suing him what they think this could mean for Libyan politics, and they said they don't know, but they are hoping that the Libyan people will take another look at Haftar as, as, as his political oppositions now. That a U.S. judge has said that he is civilly liable for war crimes. Patty, thank you very much for breaking it all down for us. Patty Calhoun, live in Washington, D.C. The UN Security Council is deadlocked on who should lead its diplomatic efforts in Libya. The current special adviser, Stephanie Williams, is scheduled to leave her post at the end of the month. Shifting government alliances in Libya have sparked renewed violence. Our diplomatic editor, James Bays, reports from UN headquarters in New York. For the fifth time in a row, the UN's mission in Libya, UNSMIL, has been extended by just three months. The three African members of the Security Council were so angered that in protest they abstained during the vote. It's not the only blow to the UN in Libya. Stephanie Williams, who's been leading the UN mission, is finally stepping down. Back in 2020, she secured an agreement between the parties to have elections, elections that have never taken place. She's wanted to step down from her post for months, but has been persuaded to stay by the UN Secretary General. I want to thank her for her extraordinary efforts to broker an agreement on the constitutional framework for elections. We wish her well in the, her future endeavors and call on the leaders of the House of Representatives and the High State Council to work constructively toward a goal, toward the goal Ms. Williams sought to advance. And we support the efforts of the Secretariat and Council members in their discussions to find a new candidate someone who can effectively lead UNSMIL and facilitate the necessary dialogue among Libyan leaders toward a persistent peace. Months ago, the UN Secretary General had identified the person he wanted to take over the UN mission in Libya, and that was Sabri Boukadoum, the former Algerian foreign minister. But his appointment was blocked by one member of the Security Council, the United Arab Emirates.